Hello 3D printing friends. Today on the BV3D channel, we're going to see what's involved in a Creality warranty claim. Stick around and we'll get into it right after this. I'm Brian and you are watching BV3D. Hi, welcome back. Hey, if you're new here and you're wanting to learn about cool 3D printer upgrades, 3D modeling, and other 3D printing related stuff, start now by subscribing and clicking the bell so you don't miss anything. Okay, so today I want to talk about what to expect from a Creality warranty claim. In particular, I want to show you what I've learned and how to make the process go as smoothly as possible. So in a way, this is a different kind of 3D printing how-to video. Now, I want to say that this process probably goes more smoothly if you purchased directly from Creality. Having an order number from their system seems to be your proof of purchase and goes a long way to speeding this process along. And if you're wondering what led me to make this video, it's this. The hot end fan on my new Ender 3 V2 died. If you've ever heard this sound, you know exactly what I'm talking about. Yep. The bushings have worn out and the fan shaft is starting to wobble around, slowing the fan down and making that a horrible noise. The process of getting a part replaced under warranty with Creality happens via email. You begin by sending an email to service at creality3d.cn describing the problem that you're having with the printer. About a day later, a representative responds to your email and will usually ask for more information or may ask you to reply with the result of performing specific troubleshooting steps. You'll reply to that message with the requested information and a day later you'll get another response and this back and forth via email can go on for a few days as the Creality rep tries to figure out if the problem was with the printer or with the printer's owner. Sometimes it's the owner. Now what I've found is that the more useful information you can pack into that initial email, the faster you can get through this process. So the first step is to gather up your information. Find that email from Creality with your order number or log into Creality's site and look up your order. That should give them most of the pertinent information about your printer. While you're doing that, you should also make note of the order date and the model of the printer. You'll also want to get the serial number from the barcode sticker on the printer itself. Armed with your order number, order date, model, and serial number, the next thing to do is document the issue. In particular, if the problem that you're having is something you can reproduce, make note of the steps that you go through to make the problem happen. If it's something that happens at random, well, make note of that too. Also, as the saying goes, a picture is worth a thousand words. So if possible, capture a video of the problem. A cell phone video is fine. That will go a long way toward explaining the issue and may cut a day or two off the entire process. So now we've got the order number, the order date, the printer model, and the serial number, a brief description of the problem, and maybe some video footage if we're lucky. Now it's time to compose the initial email. Keep in mind that the person on the other side of this exchange may not speak English as well as you do and may be relying on Google Translate or some similar language translation service to understand your message. And this should go without saying, but sometimes it needs to be said anyway. Be polite. It's not the support rep's fault that there's a problem with your printer, so if you're upset about the issue, please don't take it out on the support rep. Years ago, I was in a friend's office while he was on hold for probably the tenth time trying to get something fixed. I commented about how frustrating all the please holds were, and I wondered how he was able to stay calm through all of this. And he had this to say, and it's stuck with me ever since. Don't yell at the one person who has the ability to help you right now. So keep in mind that even though you're emailing a company, there is another human being on the other side of that exchange, and that particular human being is the one person who can help you. Okay, so back to what to say in that initial email. Here's what I've found to work the best. The subject line should be a short description of the problem. In my case, I used, hi, the hot end fan on my Ender 3 V2 is dying. And then begin with a friendly greeting. Hello, Creality support. Seemed to work pretty well for me. Next, state the problem. In my case, I said, the hot end fan on my Ender 3 V2 is dying. It makes a loud groaning noise. Sometimes turning the printer off and on again will solve the problem for a while, but I would like to get a replacement fan. I know it's easier for you when there's a video of the problem, so I have attached a short video demonstrating the problem. If the attachment is too large, I'll find another way to send it to you. And then I included my order number. So 
I've stated the problem in the subject line, making it easy for Creality to identify the issue that I'm writing about. I've given more detail about the problem in the body of the email, provided my order number, and a short video of the problem. Now, what I didn't do in this first exchange that I should have done is provide the printer's serial number. So, there was a second round of emails in which Creality support asked for that, and I provided it to them. Creality then responded to tell me they were sending a replacement fan, and they provided me with the tracking number. They already had my shipping information from the order, so they didn't have to ask me for that. One thing to note is that replacement parts like this are not sent in a speedy fashion. They will take their time getting to you. As of this video, it's been over two weeks and counting since my initial email with Creality. So that brings me to this. For little things like the fan, if you need to be up and running quickly, in addition to getting the part replaced under warranty, consider buying a replacement part from Amazon. For a fan like this, you can get a two-pack for about 10 bucks, and you'll often get it in a day or two. So by the time you're done with the email exchanges, you can have a replacement part from Amazon ready to be installed. In the past, I've sometimes just bought the replacement parts on Amazon because they didn't cost much, and I didn't even bother trying to get a warranty replacement. But after thinking about it, in addition to buying the parts on my own, going through the warranty process lets Creality know of problems in the field. If enough fans die within the first few weeks of a new printer's life, maybe Creality will use fans from a different supplier. And when the warranty replacement does finally arrive from Creality, just set it aside in your spare parts area. Fans fail all the time, so you'll need it eventually, and you'll already have it on hand when the time comes. So, like I said, I am still waiting for the fan to arrive. I do have tracking information that shows it's on the way, but the tracking updates are not frequent. When the replacement fan does finally arrive, I'll update the description of the video to indicate how long it took from the first email to receipt of the fan. So, I guess the thing that I'm trying to say is this. If you need to request a replacement part under warranty, keep a few things in mind. One, get your ducks in a row. Include as much information as you can in the first email. Two, be polite. Remember that another human being is going to be receiving that email. Three, be helpful. You might be asked to perform additional troubleshooting steps. Four, be patient. Parts can take a long time to arrive. And Five, be practical. If a part is cheap on Amazon, get it and get up and running, but still try to get a warranty replacement. Overall, it's a pretty straightforward process and you should be able to get through it quickly. The emailing part, I mean. When it comes to shipping, grab a Snickers bar. That part takes a while. Well, 3D printing friends, that's about all the time that we have for today. And now that we're at the end of the video, let's go print something cool. Hey, real quick before you go, I wanted to say thanks for being one of the super awesome people who sticks around all the way to the end, and thanks for all the likes, comments, and shares. You're all wonderful for doing that, and I really appreciate it. If you liked this episode, a thumbs up would be great. And if you'd like to help support the channel, check the description for ways that you can do exactly that. Now, don't forget, whether you're interested in buying things that were featured in the video or just buying things online in general, there are links in the description to get you to the right place. And I've got some other videos here that you might want to take a look at as well. Also, please consider subscribing if you haven't already done so. Subscribing is absolutely free, and it's an excellent way to help keep me making these videos for you. Well, that's it for this one. Thanks again, and I'll see you next time here on the BB3D channel.